very popular lightning wallet app is finally out and people are crazy about it but is it actually any good is it centralized or not and is it a risk to use it that is what we're going to talk about today i'm going to share my opinion on the spectrum that is centralization versus usability and we're going to take a look at how this app managed to actually provide a user-friendly experience and see how it works under the hood i hope you are excited for that i am for sure and i also want to remind you not of the academy this time but of a free webinar that me and ivan on tech is hosting let's see the 5th of march yes and you can click the link in the description and sign up all you need is your email address it is completely free so make sure that you sign up on the free webinar the link is in the description with that being said today we're going to talk about blue wallet i'm sure you've heard about it already everyone has demonstrated it and it is fantastic i have it on my phone and probably many of you have it on your phones as well it is a bitcoin wallet and a lightning wallet and for the first time probably ever it is a zero configuration setup to get started with lightning payments and I saw Ivan on Tech do a demo, my good friend on YouTube, on how incredibly quick this Lightning wallet was, both to set up and then to send payments. It's incredibly, incredibly easy. And that's fantastic. I like it. I really, really like it. But there is, of course, a problem that many people have been pointing out, especially people from Bitcoin Cash, from uh, other altcoins that don't like Lightning Network and point out that Blue Wallet is a custodian. And uh, that is true. Uh, and I'm going to take a look at their design now, how they have actually implemented this and what the risks are. And I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of feedback from all of the Bitcoin Cash people or Bitcoin Satoshi's Vision people in this video because they don't like this custodial approach at all. And uh, it's important to uh, remember also that Blue Wallet is separated between the lightning wallet and the bitcoin wallet the bitcoin wallet is uh, not a custodial service at all you have your keys all of that it uh, the blue wallet team or business does not touch your private keys you own those so that is uh, completely secure what we're talking about is what we're talking about is the lightning wallet that is a custodial service and what does that mean well it means that you don't have your own lightning node all of your balances are stored with blue wallet themselves they have one lightning node where they keep track of all the balances and then they simply take care of your payments for you and it is over the lightning network but it's simply that they hold all of the funds and i'm going to uh, make a nice little drawing for you so that we can go through what the actual architecture is of the blue wallet app before we actually start to um, discuss if it is dangerous or not so what have blue wallet done well if we have all of the phones here let's see we have a bunch of the users here so you have downloaded the app as long as uh, and i have downloaded the app as well we have all of these phones here different sizes of course because i can't draw but that's all good and these all connect to what uh, blue wallet is calling the lnd hub i'm sure you can't read any of this but i'm doing my best guys so don't don't be too frustrated because i'm frustrated too so the lightning hub is an open source solution which is basically a wrapper for the lightning daemon so this is where they keep track of all the balances so if this is my phone this is your phone this is bob's phone alice's phone all different phones they keep track of all the balances here so everyone's balance is saved here in this lnd hub so they keep track of everyone's balance and if you send the payment they will subtract that from your balance and then they have a lightning daemon so which is basically the lightning node so they have lnd oops lnd there we go that's a lightning daemon and then this connects to the lightning network here is where they set up all of the channels that go to other lightning nodes and of course this is where the actual lightning payments take place uh, they set up lightning nodes with uh, big uh, big channels and then they can route payments back and forth so that's all uh, all good oh you can't see the bottom of it i'm sorry but this is just i just drew like boxes here they connect to uh, to different uh, different channels uh, like this 
So, and, and they are of course controlling this node. There's not one individual node for each server, even though you can set up one yourself. So now that we know how it works, uh, the big discussion is, should we even have custodial uh, services with Bitcoin? Isn't Bitcoin all about owning your own private keys, not your keys, not your Bitcoin? Well, I am uh, definitely a uh, sort of in the middle when it comes to having these custodial services because we want usability as well. And uh, the, only, uh, the only way we're going to onboard new people in this ecosystem is if we have easy to use solutions where you can simply take up your phone, configure an app in two minutes and then use it. It's incredibly easy and we need that. We also need um, a way of handling these small payments without being afraid of people losing their keys. If I lose my uh, $50 Lightning wallet, it's not the end of the world. And at the same time, we need to uh, make sure that people don't have their life savings in custodials uh, because I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't want people to have that because there, that is obviously a big risk. But when you have a, in the blue wallet, for example, you have both a Bitcoin wallet where you actually own your keys and a Lightning wallet, which enables you to do fast and easy payments, then you could use your Bitcoin wallet like a savings account and your Lightning wallet to have just 20, 50 bucks, 100 bucks of money for, you know, shopping online or whatever. And you can then use that for making these super easy payments instead of having your grandma set up your lightning node and, you know, she's not going to get anywhere. And this is a bigger issue when it comes to centralization versus usability. And if you actually want usability, you will have to take steps away from, from decentralization, at least where we are right now. And uh, is that a bad thing? I guess some people are going to argue that, but I think it is an okay route, at least to take right now, because we're not making any progress in terms of usability of Lightning or of any other payment service where you actually have to deal with your keys. Because my mom is not going to deal with her private keys. She's not going to deal with that. Maybe she will deal with Lightning. Maybe. Uh, at least it's a step forward. And if we're always going to be afraid of uh, these centralized services for handling small payments, I don't think we're going to get anywhere. And to all the people that, uh, that don't like them and would rather use Bitcoin Cash because they have fast uh, on-chain transactions, that's fine by me. Use that. Uh, I don't think it's going to get as far because it's not as user-friendly. But uh, we'll see who wins in the end. I don't really care. I like the Blue Wallet app, but we should keep in mind that it is a centralized service, at least half of it, and you should use that with caution. Don't load up with your life savings on the Lightning Wallet. Uh, because it is a centralized service and things could go wrong. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you didn't, you can always hit the dislike button. I would also like to know what are your thoughts on the Blue Wallet app? Have you tried it? And if you have, what are your thoughts? I would also like your uh, comments on if you would like me to make a video on how to set up your own uh, Lightning node. I have uh, like a spare small computer here lying around. I could set up a Lightning node on that and connect it to the Blue Wallet app. If you would want me to, uh, please leave your feedback about that in the comment section as well. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. And don't forget to register for the webinar in the description. It's free. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.